to hear from Sarah Brittenson, who is a director with the Tupper Stars at Explosive Team Sales. So Sarah, we want to go ahead and welcome you to the call. And knowing that you've had great success with increasing your party average at your Facebook parties, in addition to, of course, all the personal parties that you already, in-home parties that you already do, we are anxious to hear from you and learn from you. We've all got our paper and pen ready, so go ahead and take it away. Well, thank you so much for that warm introduction, Jan. You are too sweet. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us on Facebook Party Training 101. This is really something that can add to your core, so this gives you a little bit more incremental business, and um, it's something that I use on a regular basis in place of catalog parties. The first step that you do with your Facebook party planning is similar to what you would do for an in-home party with getting your materials ready. When you do an in-home party, you need to figure out are you going to use folders and catalogs and order forms and all of those kinds of things. And when you're doing a Facebook party, you need to set up your computer so that you have these tools ready and able to be used right at your fingertips. I highly recommend creating folders within um, some sort of setup that is most comfortable for you. One folder will have any pre-post pictures that you do because we do open this up before the party night. Your stock pictures, so these would be pictures that you would use on a regular basis. And then a lookbook of your catalog faves and your mid-month flyer so that way those items, the catalog faves could stick around for the four month period of when the catalog is actually there. And then the, um, the mid-month flyer will, of course, change periodically. You want to make sure that your outline that you use does match the mid-month flyer along with um, any host programs that are going on because you are copying and pasting from this outline the entire time. And you will see that when we do our mock party in a little bit with our fabulous host, Ms. Inky Dean. There is going to be some very helpful tools to help you set up. I highly recommend you liking Tupperware US and Canada's Facebook page. They have awesome pictures and wonderful covers that you can use to help design the top of your group that you're going to set up. Or if you choose to use events, the cover of that as well. You can find pictures in the My Tupperware Catalogs and Flyers group. And I would highly recommend just clicking on the Photos tab. She has everything organized by albums so that you're able to look for the pictures that you like there. Sharing recipes during these parties is also a wonderful tool to do because that way it helps you to not be salesy. The My Tupperware Recipes group is really a great resource for that. And then there's a relatively new resource group called Tupperware Facebook Parties group. Um, that is really great for bouncing off ideas and other ways to look and do Facebook parties. Host coaching is the key to any successful party, be it in home or Facebook. It all starts with a thank you note. This thank you note is similar to what I would use if I booked an in home party to a Facebook party. The only difference is, is the word Facebook. All my Facebook parties happen at 8 p.m. and it is critical that you have them at that time or between 8 and 9. I chose 8 p.m. because the party is a half hour format that goes from 8 to 8.30 p.m. Then they have from 8.30 to 9.15 to order. Anything much later than that and the feedback I received is it just feels too late. 8 p.m. is also a really great time because most people are settled for the night. Most of the people who have littles can be entertained for that half hour or have somebody that helps them um, keep them entertained. So that way, 8 p.m. is a very easy time. Having them continue to collect outside orders in their thank you note so that they can be reminded of their free and half off Tupperware that they're going to earn on page 75 helps them be an active party participant for this because truly your host is your partner in this experience. I send materials to them because most of the time when I'm dating a Facebook party, it's off of a Facebook party. So it's not, I don't have an envelope that I can give them at like I do an in-home party experience. I use priority mail envelopes 
you can get them from your post office. Um, they are free to pick up. It is about $6.45 to send. And I stack it from bottom to top. So on the very bottom, we'll have the Opportunity Flyer. On top of that, we'll have about four to five catalogs, five flyers, eight to ten order forms. And then there's a confirmation email that is included in the handouts portion underneath your chat box that I will send to them via email the day that they book and then print that off so they know that I've sent it to them just in case I end up have being in their spam filter because sometimes that does happen. When you stack it like that in the priority mail envelope, there's a little space that's just wide enough for a smidget, and I tuck that smidget right inside. If you give a second gift, I would highly recommend something small so that you can fit it right next to it, like a keychain or a citrus peeler. If you want to do extra games during the party, I would also recommend adding those to the priority mail envelope and have the host give it to the guest who won during that party. I give away one gift during the entire party and it's an extra small water bottle that is added when they order. If you do something beyond that, that's fine. It's just trying to keep your shipping costs low is something that's going to be a priority for you. I do not send a dating gift or anything else for this type of party. You can add dating gifts at the end when you go with that pop-up box where the poly bags are. And I only do that if the party is very, very successful. I send an email, the confirmation email that I already spoke to, and then I send a separate save the date email. This save the date email has a link to my issue link catalog, which is www dot issuu dot com. It's in the 30 minute outline also attached to the documents that are at the bottom of it. The print off of it is key because spam filters happen and those are in a, a Word doc as well so that you can edit it to your information. In the save the date that has the digital catalog and if the sales flyer is something that I have access to in PDF form I attach it to. I encourage the host in red type to uh, CC me on there so that if anybody has questions or would like to place an order they could just reply back to both of us. Also I encourage them to send this to people who are not on Facebook because not everybody in the world is on Facebook and it gives them an avenue to collect outside orders beyond just the party. Then contact is key. Either it be calling them, emailing them, or messaging them. Keeping contact with them throughout the party process is going to be your best tool because that shows that you're engaged and it shows that they are engaged too because you're going to get that feedback from them. Having them comment on every single post that you put on the party is also key because your host is the leader of this party. They are going to help you draw their audience in because you can post as much as you want but if that host is not commenting their friends may not know to do that themselves. So by them commenting and you chatting with them underneath those comments shows that you're engaged and that you're entertained and that this is a fun way to party. Because the more fun the parties are, the more likely you're going to date more and the more likely that you're going to date more means that you're going to add more to your core. I have actually dated in-home parties from these Facebook parties as well. So it is an avenue that's just more than just beyond the actual platform. One of the things that I love to do, and I just started recently doing, is including a wish list. Now, Miss Inky Dean is going to be our host for this mock party, and I asked her when I, when her and I set this up, what would be some of your items on your wish list? Now, I took screenshots directly from the catalog that shows the prices and the items, and these are the four items that she said were on her list. The day before the party starts, this is going to be what I show and thanking people about coming to the party and helping her to earn these for free and half off. When you show this kind of a thing before, it 
shows them the purpose of the party and it allows them to know that, oh my goodness, well, if she wants to have that $114 stack cooker and she wants to pay it only free or half off, maybe I want to do that too. And I always post something like, what are your favorites or what are you most excited about from seeing on these pictures so that people comment. They get entries in the door prize drawing with every comment they do. Then, throughout it, you are going to use the outline to copy and paste from. So, either using your mouse or if you have a touchpad on your laptop like I do, whatever is easiest for you, I copy and paste everything every time. It makes it quick and easy because your party is only going to be a half hour. And if you're typing everything out, one, your fingers are going to get tired. They just are. And two, it'll make it feel difficult to actually keep up. So having this outline prepared in advance is a lot like using a script or having index cards for your in-home party ready to go so that you are prepared and you know that you're able to answer any question that comes out. So now I'm going to show you how I set it up on Facebook. So it all starts with having you and your host being friends on Facebook. And Miss Inky, if you are on, I'm going to send you a message. So that way I know that you are on Facebook. Now to prep for the party, I create a group. You can do these in advance. I prefer groups because I'm kind of a control freak. Those of you who know me know this and are probably giggling right now. Um, what groups enable us to do is that they allow you to see if the people are responding and if people are engaged in the party because it tells you how many people have seen the post. And you're just going to name the group with her name. You can abbreviate Tupperware or you can do, um, you can do TW Facebook party or whatever works for you. And the only people that you are inviting are the host. You're going to let her know that you are setting it up for her. I am setting up your and will send you the link soon. And that way this will give you time to set up everything that you need to set up. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to upload a picture. And the pictures are all done in my pre-posts or I will use my wonderful um, sales flyer to capitalize it as well. So in this case, I really love our wonderful host guest special that is good through September 30th because I think it shows off the amazing products that are in the catalog and it also shows off that Inky has the ability to earn some really cool things. So I have that as my cover page. Then I'm going to go to my outline and I am going to set up the description. Now the description is going to be added right here to the add the description area and you would put in her name and you would put in the date and day. So in this case it would be September 14th at 8 p.m. Now when you refresh your screen this also shows up over here. Then you are going to upload the catalog. That is also one of the reasons why I love using groups versus events. In an event, you can only load 44 pictures at a time. Our catalog is 80 pictures long. So you're going to create an album that has the fall catalog. I love doing this because it allows people to enlarge the pictures that much easier when they're using their mobile devices. In the My, Tupper My Tupperware Catalogs and Flyers group, they have this album there. If the pictures are not loading all the time, Sometimes you do have to take screenshots of it to make it work. All I write is fall and holiday catalog. 
And then I write comment with your favorite new and Tupperware treasures of old. I can't wait to see what your answers are. So this is loading it. And it does take a couple minutes for it to load. And I check to make sure that all the pictures are there. And you hit post and it's ready to go. This is all done on day one. The Facebook parties are set up seven to ten, ten days in, in advance, no later than that, because anything more than that, and it's just way too overwhelming. Be there forever and a day. It is taking a little bit for it to post. So I'm going to open up a new window, and you can see it's starting to load the catalog right there. So the next pictures that you're going to add is you're going to add the flyers from the mid-September flyer that are on sale along with the festive favorites because the party is this week. Here are just some of the specials for Pinky's party. Comment below for or to be entered in the door prize drawing with your favorites. And then I go over and I let Inky know everything is set up. It's all good to go. Find it here and you may want to bookmark it or make it a favorite so it is easy to find. So then I go over here to my host coaching and I let her know that this is a message that she can send to her friends and families and everything like that. And this gives her an idea of who she should invite. I always make sure that the hosts know that they should not add people just to add people because you know what? We have all been added to a group where it is not something that you knew about and then you feel like, what? Why do they think I need to have this? So this allows you to be able to share with them, uh, with people who actually want to be there. And when you have people who want to be at a party, then you're able to actually have more success. You want to cap these groups at 50 people. Anything more than that, as statistics have shown, you end up having people who don't show up. Because if you've been invited to an event that has 100 people, you look at that event and go, well, you know what? 99 other people are going. I don't need to come. So having her send this private message and you would change the date and day so that it matches Inky's info so that she can have it there. Now I'm going to post some things in here I would not post on her, inside this group just so you can see what it's like. Actually I can just show you. On her wall after I've set this up I would post this picture and letting them know that there's going to be a party on the day and date. This allows her to share it with her friends and family and may catch some people that she didn't think to send this message to because there's always a few people that say, oh yeah, please add me. Oh, it's also very critical to let people know not to send this message in a group message format. Individual messages are key because that makes people feel special just like sending the individual mailed invite when you have a home party. Then you have day one. So I already talked about having the catalog and flyer. And you can post also for day one what this party is going to be about. And just adding this picture in your pre-post area will cause people to have an idea of what kind of format this is going to be. You try to make it so that you don't have the see more if you can. 
Anytime you have the see more, most of the time people don't comment on it or look at it. But in this case, it's a good idea because they can see that there's more numbers. On day three, I tend to create a poll. Creating a poll is something that interests in Inky. I know you're listening, so if you want to add anybody who you think would be able to comment on these posts so we can kind of have it be interactive, you go right ahead, girl, girlfriend. Um, Lindsay Warren, I know, is on her way, so I don't know if she's available to be added. But uh, whoever you think would work, that'd be great. So you're going to create this as a poll. And these polls are really quite nice because it gives you immediate feedback of what kind of direction you want this party to go. And having this feedback is helpful because then you're creating this party so it's unique to this host and it's unique to the actual people who are attending this party too. When it's unique to them and it's meeting their needs, you are going to be able to create a relationship with them quicker because you will only know these people for a very short amount of time. Whenever somebody clicks on the poll, it shows who it is. And if you're not Facebook friends with them, it just says plus one. And then you can see who that person is. When I see that, that these are what the options are, if somebody wants to save time, well, then I'm going to look at the pressure cooker and um, our microwave tools to save time. For healthy living, I'm going to look at fridge smarts, and I'm going to look at the smart steamer. And to save the money, most money, definitely I'm going to look at vent and serves because we can do plan overs that way. And of course, fridge smarts. So this is on day three. Around day four, depending on what the results of the poll, I always like to start off with this post, which is about fridge smarts. Now you'll notice I did not post a picture of the fridge smart. Having this picture invites them to just write whatever fruits and vegetables that they really enjoy in this party. Oh, we have five members. So Inky, be sure to comment underneath the post so that your guests start to do so too. And um, having them write what they like to have last a little bit longer is really a helpful tool. I let that happen for about the day and I let them know that I have found that fridge smarts are an item that actually can save it. And I incorporate a video that is inside of Tupperware's YouTube channel. And these videos are really awesome to have on your template because it, people will ask questions about the pasta maker and that may not be something you feature, but then if you have it on your template, um, you have the ability to um, copy and paste it really quickly. And so Denise Stewart commented on it and that she loved the smart steamer and you can do it. You want to be interactive with them too and say things like, I love it too. What do you use it for? Because just like at a party, when you hear somebody say, oh, I love those fridge smarts, I use them for everything, you put those fridge smarts right into that person's hand so that they can demo the product. By me asking Denise, what does she use the fridge, her steamer for? That is going to tell people, oh my gosh, somebody else uses this. I think I might be able to use it too. So that kind of idea ends up selling itself as well. Then, moving on, depending on what they say, if they want to have time savers, what I love to do is I love to show off the pressure cooker because it's a high ticket item that is something that might be out of some people's price ranges, but is practical for people to use. And instead of showing them the picture of it from the catalog, I've taken a picture of my favorite recipe with it with your camera. Now these pictures are actually perfect for you to use then on your normal Facebook page because showing somebody this picture is going to go, oh my gosh, I just really, 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 really want to have that. Can I please eat that? Or what, 
how do I make that? Because that is how we learn. People love pictures. Um, and having all of these acknowledged are really important too, either by liking them or by commenting. If you're seeing a host that is only liking, sending them a message, reminding them to comment is, is a very good idea because, like I said before, having them comment on posts are going to be what starts everybody else commenting just like Judy did and Denise did. So you're going to continue on again with no more than one post per day so it is not overwhelming at all. Um, showing them other things like the Ultra Pro on a different day. This could incorporate a dip idea which will then give you the ability to produce a recipe or it kind of advertises a way for you to do a party as well. And this party is obviously something that I did at somebody's home. You continue on with this format and then three days before the party occurs you are going to have this post. And I do tag my hosts in it. And today is Wednesday. I do tag my hosts in this, so that way she is alerted to the fact that there is a new post. I don't want to overwhelm them, so I want to make sure that they know that they really only need to comment on anything that is new. I want to make sure that people know that we are going to have this party only open for a little time, so that's why we have the three days left to order. This 20 reasons to have a Facebook party is one of the cutest little graphics you could ever have. Most people say the reason why they want to do it is they don't want to sit her, so then you know they um, no excuses for weather cancellations is very important for us here in Minnesota because you know what? Winter happens and I have taken in-home parties that just could not happen because of Mother Nature deciding that she wanted to give us new snow and converted them to a Facebook party with much success. The no need for a bra is just funny, especially when there's a guy in the party and he says that's his favorite reason. Because you know what? Guys need Tupperware too. Then, showing off things like the warranty program. Whenever modular mates are on sale like they are right now, I love to share before and after pictures. You have a before and after picture that is something you can use. I would highly recommend using that instead of something like this. Because the more personal you can make it, the less manufactured that it looks, the more people are going to feel relatable to you and genuine to you. If you can go live in this using your mobile device, that shows an added feature. You could go live the day before the party to introduce yourself if you choose to. Checking this notifications area is also important because I want to make sure that if Denise, Judy, and Inky are posting underneath this pressure cooker, I can say I can respond to it. Um, and then for Denise, I can say, you know, things like, you can make anything in a crock pot. So I would continue to comment on it so that it is easy for you to use. Now, if you're having people say, Sarah, I can't seem to refresh the feed, Facebook has changed a little bit. And I've, if you click on the title of the group, you can see that it refreshes it for you. Then, if you're having low attendance, you can use this bring a friend to the party, and when they both place a $30 order, you can send each of them a gift. That could be a citrus peeler in the mail. You've got to make sure that you have the correct posts, so make sure that you go to your post office first. There is an awesome YouTube video that Tupperware produced for the winter and fall catalog. You can put that in as a way to show the catalog in a different format than what you've already posted. I love it because it is interactive in the way that there's beautiful music and it's fun to watch. One of my favorite posts to post year round because I like wine 
and I know some people out there like wine too, is the medium water bottle wine pitcher. Let me see if I can find it. I renamed some of these. Um, there it is. So posting this picture usually gets a giggle or two. And then they talk about what they would put in it instead. Because some people have asked, can I use beer or mixed drinks? But either way, this gives them interactive. And then what I love to show, too, is my modulate mate pitcher with s'mores. Um, I love s'mores. Here is my favorite way to bring them out. Uh, Judy's a girl after my own heart. She likes wine, too. All right, so... Having this kind of interaction, not only have I now shown them a lower ticket item of the water bottle, but now I'm showing them how they can use their modular mates, so it gives them another reason. And as we all know, if you have a modular mate customer, you have one for life. So having the multiple ways to use the same product is always important. Um, then we get to another polling option. If you are having people who are not having a whole lot of interaction, another way that you can get people to interact with you is to put something funny on it. And I love this one because it incorporates our breakfast maker and it incorporates chocolate, which is a fan favorite for many people. And then later on, after people have had the opportunity to actually answer this poll, I will go on and take them with either this brownie pitcher or this chocolate chip cookie pitcher. So that way it becomes personal to them and it shows that I'm taking an interest in their thoughts. So then the day before the party, so this would be yesterday, if Inky's party was today, I would go ahead and put it up Inky's wish list. And this gives her the ability to show off to her friends and family the purpose of this party is to help her get things for free and half off. And it may introduce them to some things that they didn't think that they may have wanted at the time. Then the day at the party, I will post this reminder on the wonderful hostess's team or her personal page and include the websites, and that's this link right here. When you copy this one, it goes people, it directs people directly to this group. If you're using an event, the events do the same thing. Then I will message the host a simple message to remind her that her party is going on today. I let her answer, and then I'm going to ask her, who do you think would be the friend that would book a party herself. If you miss a letter, make sure you type it. And that is actually going to be your clue as to who may actually win the drawing. Yes, your door prize drawing is rigged. I'm sorry, it's going to be rigged a little bit because we want to continue building our wonderful business and if she thinks Judy and Denise are going to win, in order for them to get that wonderful extra small water bottle, they're going to have to talk to me to build that or to get that order. And this is going to give me the opportunity, if they haven't already booked a party within the party format, for me to talk to them about having a party. And I can say things like, Inky told me that you would just be an awesome host. What do you think about having an in-home cooking demo? And you write down their names. And those are going to be the people that you try to focus on and make sure that they're there. I'm hoping that this all makes sense to everybody. Then, the day of the party, everything you saw before is only done within the host and in messaging. What I do next is I post in the wonderful group. This picture. 
and it just gives them a cute way of them telling us that they're going to be coming. And then you're going to put this message to let them know how they can order because you will be collecting orders throughout the day. So you're going to want to put these this this these posts on as soon as you can. So if you work during the day, you probably won't want to have those interruptions. And you might put them on the post on your wonderful Facebook group around four o'clock ish. You're going to change it so that it has your phone number information and let them know that this is how you're going to order. I use my issue link and I post that here in the comments so that everything's in one place for them to find. If they ask where the catalog is, then I just scroll down and I'll tag. Um, so if Judy asks where is the catalog, here it is. What that does is it actually will then move the catalog up to the top. So whenever anybody comments on a post, that's what happens in events and in groups. You can post your dates for your parties right here if you'd like to. And then you leave it alone until party time. At 7.30 or 30 minutes before the party, you let people know that things are going to be started. Oh good, everybody's coming to the party. And you're going to let people know that you want to know who, what they're wearing for the party clothes. Because you want this to be comfy and you want this to be fun. If you want, give them extra points for putting a picture of it on there too. Because quite frankly, the more interactive you can have it, the more fun it is. And I absolutely love it when my host posts pictures on these posts because it shows what they're eating and drinking. I will take the pictures myself with my phone and upload it and comment it myself so that way it shows them that they can do it too. Then 15 minutes before you post this one and that allows them to know that hey, they should go get that drink and get comfy and then having them go through and know that this is going to be starting with the fall host exclusives and if there's an extra host bonus like there is right now it's okay to include that too. You're going to tag your host any place where it's because anything in bold on Word doesn't show up I capitalize all of those and that's something I will post at 8 o'clock. Oh another fun thing to post or this is actually posted a little bit before 8. Inky, I know that I'm not typing this to you, but if you can type in your wonderful box, if you like Robert Downey Jr., um, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, or Channing Tatum, that would be awesome because I have a special surprise to share with everybody if you can do that. Letting them know that it's going to be four parts. And then I like to show up, show off some McDreamy. So I'm, I'm hoping that is uh, Channing Tatum. So I'm not sure who is that McDreamy. Is that who that is, my dear? Then I found these really cute memes. I gave her a chance to answer real quick. Awesome. Great minds think alike. You are a very smart girlfriend. <laughs> then I post this picture because he's just nice to look at and it puts a smile on most people's faces. I'm sure it even put a smile on Brian's face because I know he's listening too. <laughs> and then at 8 o'clock we post the roll call. The roll call is your page from the catalog that includes the water bottle. And I absolutely adore Tupperware that they put the serving center right on the same page because I got 
so many people saying, oh my gosh, that's, that is such a cool way to do a serving center and I've sold more serving centers now because of it. Having your friend uh, become your Facebook friend, either liking your page or having them be your friend on Facebook, depending on what your comfort level is, is actually really an important part of this party because you want to be able to have build a contact list beyond what that day of that party is so that you can continue to cultivate those relationships. Oh, Denise, you too are a girl after my own heart. All right, so having them check in here by just typing in here, and if they're not doing that, you can see that Denise has seen that, so she, I could cue Denise in, hey, sure, be sure to check in. You're going to give them from 8 to 8.05 to do this. Then at 8, um, at 8.05 is when you may repost a Fridge Smart post and or you might choose something from your lookbook that is your, in your part three. And you would just share something that is a higher ticket item that maybe they wouldn't look at and then they could comment underneath it. Having something like this shows that you're meeting their needs. They talked about wanting to have something fast and easy and showing off things that are on sale that are the higher ticket value items is also a good idea to do during these wonderful uh, 10 minutes or so of part two. Now because the smart steamer is on sale, I will do these two posts with this one so that they realize that it is going to be of higher value to them if they get it with this party. Making it personal and interactive is really what's key in this. Then you can show off the videos if they're not familiar with the product. And that way it keeps giving them the information. Now if they're really interactive with you and there's really only two posts that you have time because people are commenting on it, that's okay. You really only need two or three posts in this 10 minute time frame. Then you're going to move on to post three, so around 8.15, you're going to have retail your retail therapy. Now, there are a couple ways that you can do this. You can take and do one post, which I'm going to show you what that's like with my catalog faves, which is a folder that I have set up. I don't like to think too much when I'm doing my Facebook parties, so that's why I put everything with numbers because then when I go to sort it, it shows up in order that I want it to post. And while this is posting, I can go ahead and in another tab, go and see what the questions are. It tastes so yummy. And just keep commenting on there. And if you happen to have pictures that could help Inky see it to believe it, I would showcase those too. Then you can go back to see if your pictures are done loading. This is almost done. And you would post it. So this is one way to post your lookbook. When you post your lookbook, it's showing off all your favorite things. You want to have it be a mix of items, mostly lower priced ones, so that it is easy for you to have people want to get in the buying mood. The other way you can do it is you can show off by grouping it. So for my sale items, I can take and I can group my sale items. I need my mid September folder. And I'm going to take my Smart Steamer 7-piece set, Bent and Serve, and start grouping them like this because 
because they are like items. And if I happen to have a video of the smart steamer, I would post that then in the comments section down here so that they can see what that's like. You can then go ahead and group three more. Um, things that make sense. You don't want to really go beyond four pictures because anything more than four pictures, it starts to do plus one and then they may not actually see them. Here are some great kitchen tools. What are your favorites? And that sentence that I just did, I could put together in on this outline so I just can copy and paste it as well. Having these pre-done does lessen your stress level for the party because you're not trying to type and keep up at the same time. Then around 8.25 or so, or I'm sorry, around 8.20, missed a post, you'll notice that all these posts are actually numbered. So that way if they move around, people can see what post it's supposed to be. Like an in-home party, you want to talk about the opportunity. And when you talk about the opportunity, you know you have your recruit leads. Letting Inky know that should she decide to join my team, the party's dated here will be hers to start her business is something that you do with every party. So why not do it on a Facebook party? This gives them the opportunity to ask any questions that they want. You do need to sometimes remind them that it needs to be up and not about the products, just like you might need to do at an in-home party. And then at around 8.25, you do the virtual party drawing. And because she said that Miss Judy is going to be likely my next host, and she has been really interactive and she loves wine, so maybe she'll do a wine and chocolate party, I'm going to award her the, the drawing item. And I use the same picture that I used earlier. So that way, she can see it. And it is key, that extra small bottle with your order is a key statement to use. You need to pay for this water bottle. You don't want to have to pay for it out of your own pocket and not be able to do it. I add this to their order. I deduct $5 from their order. And that way, if their order is shipped directly to them, they're going to get it. If it's shipped to the host, I just let the host know that this is part of their order as well. Because not everybody can be a winner as much as we would love them to be. We need to make sure we have every ability to make everybody feel special. And the way that we do that is through our attendance offer. That also gives them a reason to give you a call. Because when they give you a call, you have the ability to find out more information about them booking a party and so on and so forth. Then in around 827, you want to post your datings. You want to make sure your dates are within two to three weeks of whenever your party is and you're not giving them six, 10 options. Having four options is a really great way to start because when you have only four options, that shows that you actually have, are condensed about your business. If you like to do in-home parties as well, you can include those in-home party dates. I tend to give one more date for my in-home parties than I do for my Facebook parties because I like doing in-home parties too and I want to let them know there's actually more availability to people when they have it. A cute picture to add to this, especially to move it up to the top, is this do it picture. Can you find it? Well, I'll show it to you on the outline. So this is do it within the comments. Then at 8.30, you're going to thank them for coming and let them know that it's their time to actually place the order if they haven't done so already. Make sure that you have all of the sale options available. 
I don't let them know that it's going on beyond 915 because I do want a sense of urgency for them to actually go ahead and be a part of this party. It also gives you the ability to let the host know who has the, who has talked to people and who has um, who has looked at the post and who has not. So if, if for example, if Lindsay if Lindsay has been on this party but hasn't commented on anything, I could then tell Inky, you know, I've heard from Judy, I've heard from Denise, and I know that Lindsay has seen everything on the party, but she just hasn't commented. I can let Inky know. You might want to thank her for her for coming to the party and let her know that if she'd like to order anything, to so please let um, me know by 9:15. That way, it's coming from the host as well. The next day, or at 9:15, I always post a thank you. So that way, that they know that this is that at this point, it's mostly done. And you do want to thank people for coming and taking their time. If you have time to extend it to the next day, then you choose the time. For example, I have a Facebook party going on right now that I have extended to 3 p.m. today because I have an in-home party tonight. And I want them to be able to have extra time to be able to place an order if they wish to. Doing reminders with the last call is a really great idea, especially if she needs one more party or a few more orders to get to a certain level. And then when the party closes, thanking them. There's also some really cute pictures of letting people know when the party is shipped and um, that it should be to the host store. I have found posting that is helpful because then it gives a cue to people that if they shipped it to the host that the order should be coming soon. Also in the 30-minute outline, you're going to see different um, links that I've already done with my canned ham kind of messages. Please feel free to edit those. This is your link. And if my phone number is accidentally in there, please go ahead and change that too. That Click It peeler that's on sale right now, they have actually created a video that I found on YouTube that you could post way back here in the Click It peeler that shows off how it works. And because of that, I sold one last night on the Facebook party that I was on. So at this point, there's about five minutes left of our wonderful session. Go ahead and um, let me know any questions, Jan. Okay, I do have a, cute, a couple questions here. One is, does the host add people to the group that they want or only the people that agreed to attend? Only the people that agreed to attend is key. If they said, yes, absolutely add me, or you know what, maybe I might be able to order something, those are the people you want. If they say no, what I tell my host is, don't worry about it, we only want 50 people in the group anyways. Okay, very good. The next, oh, the next one's a comment. They love the tip on refreshing the page by clicking on the title. So Thank that you. was good. Here's, is there a reason you do not pin the catalog? Um, the main reason is because of mobile Facebook. In the mobile Facebook app, the pinned albums do not actually show up on the mobile unless they click on the little bar at the top that says view the pinned app or the pinned album or whatever the pinned post is. I have found it's actually easier for people to, to find if they request it to just tag them in it. Okay, very good. All right, how do we get the link so the hostess gets the credit? I'm not sure what you mean. Are you saying, do I provide my website, maybe? If that is the case, the answer is I don't. Nowhere in this entire party will I post my web address for them to be able to order online. All orders must be placed through me or the host. And the reason why we do this is because in order for the host to get free and half off Tupperware, I need to manually enter $175 worth of Tupperware orders for anything online to merge with that party. 
if they had a thousand dollars of online orders and fifty dollars of orders I could manually put in, Inky's party would only be fifty dollars. When I have a hundred and seventy-five dollars in orders that Inky's party could have in, that party would magically blossom to a hundred one thousand one hundred and seventy-five. Very good. Okay. Now, during the 8.30 to 9.15 time, that's when you can catch up on your posts and see what people have commented on. And um, just, you know, relate to them and talk with them about everything. You can scroll through or you can look through your notifications here. You're going to want to make sure you're looking for likes because a like is just saying that they acknowledge it. The, this means that they commented. Is there any other questions, Jan? Yes, there's one that says, um, do you then only take credit card payments? Yes. Okay. Visa, MasterCard, or Discover. Okay, and this one says, how do you collect the money? So I guess that answers that. You collect the money when you are on taking the phone their order them. on the by phone. I always have them call me with their credit card. That gives them the voice connection. And I get to chat with them a little bit, let them know, did you enjoy yourself at the party? Uh, would you like me to add you to my email list for specials? So that way I can form a relationship with them in that little bit of time. Great. Um, another comment, great training, Sarah. Another one, can I please get the outline sent? Some of you may not have noticed, I posted in the chat, there is a place that says handouts that's in the control panel right there where you're typing. And under the tab that says handouts, there are four handouts for this training. So you can pull those off right there. I've got one more question. I'm sorry if this was already asked. Um, how do you encourage them to call you and order rather than all ordering online to maximize the host benefits? Well, I do not. I do not share my my Tupperware uh, website, so that's one way. Having everything inside that Facebook group, the catalog, the sales specials, means they never have to leave that. I'm clear with all the posts that they can call or message me their order. And when they've messaged me their order with their address, email, and phone, I then can let them know, okay, I'm going to give you a quick call to get your credit card information. There is, it's not safe to put your credit card information in Messenger or email or text, in my opinion. And because of that, that's why I asked them to call. And having that final touch is what makes it different than just communicating via text because you're not able to hear tone or intonation when you're just talking in text. A helpful tip to give you is if you are truly interested in making Facebook a part of your business, I highly recommend you check out the tag team. This is a, a group of ladies, it's a pair of them actually, that have been very successful in marketing themselves as the non-salesy Facebook ladies. They have a Facebook page you can like, and they have a business page where you do courses similar like you would do for a college class. I do not get any commission or anything. I just use them, and because I use them, I have seen a blossom in my business. In my part two that I do for my Facebook parties, I do a video demonstration instead of just doing the post. That is another option for you to do as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, I have one more. Um, let me see. <clears throat> I think there's... So you don't post the Tupper Connect at all? No. Okay. Um, the tag team is awesome. Okay. And... Um, oh, she can't get the handouts off of... The connection here. So your um, upline business leader will have these tools as well. And there's something I need to edit in the outline. So I will send those to Judy and to Jan to pass out um, as people request them. Okay. And then one other comment that I'll share. I've opened a PayPal business account so I can send invoices that can be paid directly to me. 
They do not have to have a PayPal account. It has helped up sales for me. I lose approximately 2% to PayPal, but I do have more people ordering. Good for you. So, okay, I think that's everything. Thank you all for taking your time to join us today. We really do appreciate it. And as I said, this um, call has been